The historical inspiration for the dress portion of this costume is a 1790s chemise a la rain. I've made one of these before and the way that I figured out how to do it is just by draping it on my mannequin and figuring out where my underbust is and where my waist is. I'm going to add two channels that I can lace and gather at the waist and the underbust. And how I do this is I measure out where my underbust is and then take my tape measure and measure along the whole length of the fabric. I'm using six yards of orange cotton voile that I ordered online. Um, and when I stretched it out, it went nearly the entire length of my apartment. I used a big running stitch to hold my tape in place um, before stitching very carefully along the edge of each side of the tape. Then I used my mannequin friend to help me lace and gather the whole length of the fabric. Once I put it back on my mannequin, I use pins to pin up the whole front of the bust and determine where my collar is going to start. Uh, I'm going to do this by drawing a line directly under where I've pinned with a friction marker or like a heat erasable marker and then I'm going to trim back the collar. I'm also going to trim out some armholes while I'm in this step. I'm going to use this line to apply an exterior tape instead of an interior tape and because it's going to be on the outside I'm going to make six yards of matching cotton wall tape out of a remnant of the fabric that I have. This is definitely uh, tedious work but I find it can be super meditative. Last, I'm going to add some sleeves. I'm just measuring out a little folded rectangle of fabric and then cutting a slight angle to fit into my arm side. My last step was to add gathering channels at my upper arm and elbow. I'm going to mix centuries and make an 1860s style Swiss waist belt to go over my dress. A Swiss waist is a boned pointed garment that's not a corset but it's sort of corset adjacent. It's got uh, this big central point and it's supposed to act sort of like a waist cincher over a voluminous outfit. I'm adding some heavy embroidery that matches the color of the dress underneath. If I had better time management skills on this part of the project, I would be doing hand-sewn eyelets, but instead I'm going to be using some gold grommets. I'm about to get in the car to go to the uh, fabric store, and I realized that I'm wearing an accidentally very Halloween-y outfit. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed. I watched a really cool video, uh, I can link down in the description below, by Coco Sugar Cosplay, where they made some of the most beautiful fairy wings I've ever seen. Uh, and they have a great DIY tutorial that you should definitely check out. I made this pattern for the fairy wings on vinyl, even though in the video they use uh, like an acetate, and I thought that because the vinyl is a clear plastic, it would work sort of the same, but I found out after making this whole pair of wings that it was a little bit too heavy for me, like too heavy on my back. They just felt a little bit clunky. 
And then when I tried them on, I was like, oh, wait a second, I friggin' hate plastic. I can't believe I forgot how much I hate plastic. So then I went back and did the same tutorial that um, Coco Sugar Cosplay did, but I made them out of organza with like very light coat of glitter and Mod Podge and um, dimensional like glitter, oh, puffy paint, that's what's called, like 3D puffy paint. Uh, to describe sort of where the, the veins in the wings are, and that worked out super well. What the heck does a pumpkin leaf look like again? I know I want to include them in the crown because it's going to describe like what I am in this costume, but I'm really <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants for this part of the project. I kind of have no plan going into this, I just know which elements I want to create. So I started by uh, making a bunch of super wonky pumpkin leaves out of canvas and then painting them, adding little veins. I kind of like working on something where I don't have a clear vision of what it's going to look like when it's done. For most of my projects, I know exactly what something's gonna look like. I don't really sketch things, but I have an idea of what it looks like and the way to construct it in my head. And sometimes it's really fun to just bumble around and like figure it out as you go. My favorite part of the crown is definitely the flaccid unicorn horn that I made out of clay that's supposed to look like a stem of a pumpkin on my head. My final step in this project is making a pumpkin wand. Um, I just made this out of Model Magic, a big dowel, and some paint, and some aluminum foil. I tried to match the pumpkin-y orange color of my dress fabric as close as I could with the paint that I had, and I think it turned out pretty sweet. The Moretta mask was popular in the 17th and 18th century at Venetian masquerade parties. It's a perfect black circle, usually covered in velvet with no strings or bands to attach it to your head. Instead, the Moretta mask has a single button sewed to the inside of the mask, which someone would hold in their mouth, making them unable to speak while they are wearing it. This adds another layer to the sedu seductiveness and anonymity that the mask allows, because the person wearing it could be very coy and selective with who they're revealing their voice and face to. I think this effect will be lost if I make it in orange velvet. I like the hole in the face void that the Moretta mask creates, and I think it's gonna look clunky in a bright color. Instead, I'm making a circular mask, pumpkin shape out of makeup, and because I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm setting my grease paint with cornstarch that smells like my spice cabinet.